Yeah, and I think in one of, in every match uh, along the way today, we will be telling you guys what the stakes are like. For example, this very first one with UK versus Malaysia, they are actually in this sort of a group of death and it's actually in group D. So we have UK, Malaysia, Honduras and Germany together in the same group. Honduras, uh, unfortunately, like they lost twice already in weeks one and two. So they are kind of out of contention. But UK and Malaysia, we see in front of us together with Germany, they have uh, a very big shot to get into those top two spots to move on to the group stage. Definitely, definitely. And uh, with uh, the the UK uh, having uh, just one win, whereas uh, Malaysia has one win and a tie, uh, Malaysia only needs a tie in order to guarantee they move on to the next round, whereas the UK needs to clinch this win. So uh, this will be a really, really pivotal match, deciding uh, which team starts uh, the rest of their matches with a 2-1. So definitely something to look out for. And yeah, I don't think there's any reason to hold back anymore. I think we can go straight into the match. Yeah, so let's introduce both the players. So on the left for UK, we have Eden Bachelor. Um, he is a player that has been playing for really quite some time, since 2012. And he has a lot of very good uh, quality, like very good results, as we can see on the screen here. Notably, um, in previous years, and also in the Sword and Shield era in 2020 and 2021. And in the current, um, sorry, in World Cup 2021 last year, he actually had a 2-2 record and did very well for UK because UK managed to move on to the group stage. And then in week one, he actually used a Zashen Iveltel Blastoise team. And I think it might be similar with the team we are seeing right now. And for Kairu Fami, um, he's from Malaysia and he is qualified for day two worlds because he just had a top eight, uh, sorry, a top four finish in the Malaysian Nets with a uh, Calyrex Ice and Reshiram team. And one thing to note for this year in World Cup is that he is actually currently two and zero. A lot of players are two and zero right now, so getting more wins just gives yourself like more pride, right? More wins to your name, being undefeated. And the fun fact here is that he actually used two completely different teams with completely different Pokemon for weeks one and two. So total of like 12 Pokemon used so far, which is super impressive from a team like Malaysia. Definitely. And uh, one more thing to highlight about in is they were using a Restaurant uh, Blastoise team over in a Series 11 uh, and wrote a big team report about that in Victory Road. Uh, I remember I certainly took a look back when uh, this was when uh, Blast was just starting to take off in popularity, so really innovative. And as you mentioned with Fami as well, uh, he has been using different teams throughout the World Cup, so uh, I'm really excited to see what kind of teams they brought into this matchup. I think they're uh, quite uh, unique, as we can see here. Over here on Eden's end, we have Zacian, Calyrex Shadow, Incineroar, Rillaboom, that Blastoise that they clearly very like, and the thunderous uh, there. Yeah, I think that's actually. our yeah that's our mistake because the thunderous should be the incarnate form, uh, and it's like more or less the um, Zashin Calyrex Shadow uh, archetype with the Blastoise with the G Max Blastoise always being able to be a good Dynamax candidate. And from Kairos end, wow, that's actually a team I have never really seen before. Yeah, it's a very very cool team uh, with Calyrex Ice Lunala Incineroar Hydreigon. Gastrodon and Regieleki. Uh, this is actually a team that was piloted by Kohei Sakurai, a uh, really strong Japanese player on um, yeah, Team Japan this year, uh, a manager as well. Uh, they got a, a second place finish at a big uh, best of three grassroots tournament over in Japan a few weeks ago. And just right after, uh, Huang Fi on um, one of the Latin American teams also uh, made a huge top cut in a victory road tournament right after. So it's a team that, you know, is quite unique. Uh, we see the Hydreigon, which is not a popular pick, especially in this format. But uh, yeah, uh, this has already clearly shown some results. And uh, I'm actually quite excited to see if this Hydreigon will come out here. Uh, very Looks very favorable on paper against the Calyrex Shadow and no fairy Pokemon in sight on Eden's side. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to see how this turns out. Wow, that would be so cool to see a Hydreigon in action. So I have um, words from the organizers that actually the Terrian is actually correct. So these are really exciting teams to feature for our very first stream of the day. Definitely. Uh, so 
I think we can go ahead and just jump right into the first game. Yeah, so from um, we are looking at things from Eden's perspective. So they have kindly provided us the footage. So Eden actually leads with Kyrex Shadow and Rillaboom N from Farmy's N. We finally have that Hydreigon. I think it will be the first time on our Victory Road World Cup stream for Hydreigon to make an appearance. And together with Hydreigon, we have that very fast Reggie Lecky. And right off the bat, we have good fake out pressure and very interesting forms of speed while the Rillaboom uh, set the grassy terrain and actually holds a grassy seed. So already a very interesting item right off the bat. Certainly, we have a really favorable lead over on Fami's uh, side. Uh, you know, Regilecki, known for its speed control with very high uh, speed, uh, can maybe go for Electroweb or a Max Airstream, and then follow up with the Hydreigon uh, Dark-type move to uh, sort of uh, knock out the Cataract Shadow from the first turn, so definitely needs to respect that. On the other hand, Rillaboom and Pokemon not really known to appreciate Max Airstreams, and Hydreigon and Regilecki are Pokemon who are no, uh, able to use that move to boost their speed, so yeah, I think Eden will have to take a more of a defensive turn this turn. But we see the Regilecki switching out on Fami's end. Yeah, so Incineroar comes in and that makes sense. And now we have actually double types, double dark types from Fami's and Going up against this very sad looking Calyrex Shadow, so Calyrex not going to do anything. So um, smartly from Eden's end, switches the Calyrex Shadow out into their own Zacian. And the Zacian here now provides good pressure onto the oppo opposing team. And we notice here that the Incineroar came out before the Zacian, so the Zacian does not have an Intimidate drop on it, so still at its plus one attack stat. And we see the Rillaboom go for a Dynamax, potentially scared of uh, the uh, Max Airstream that we talked about earlier. Yeah, what a crazy Dynamax right off the bat on turn one. I wouldn't think that the Rillaboom is going to attack into the Hydreigon, so I would expect something like a Max um, Dreamax Drum Solo to go into the Incineroar slot. Notably, the um, Hydreigon managed to move first before um, the Rillaboom and go for a Snarl, which doesn't really matter against these two uh, physical Pokemon. And then Rillaboom goes for the Max Quake into Regilecki, which makes sense because it's super effective into the Electric type and actually catches the Incineroar on the switch in. And making really, really great play here. Uh, we talked about how they were a little bit behind in the beginning of this first turn, but totally turning around, bringing a Zacian in with no Intimidate drops, uh, able to potentially knock out either of these Pokemon on Fami's end in one shot, whether it's a play rough onto the Hydreigon or a Sacred Sword into the Incineroar. And to boot, Rillaboom has gotten off a Max Quake that got the Incineroar into the Sacred Sword range for Zacian to be in with and uh, also able to boost its special defenses so that if the uh, Hydreigon is to come out again, and maybe even Dynamax, uh, you know, the attack will be, uh, the damage will be mitigated a lot more. True, yeah, that's a very good thing to do. And like having, um, being able to scare the Reggie Lecky out then allows Zacian to be probably the fastest on the field. However, we do see that Dynamax come out from the Hydreigon and from all those early series that we have played in Sword and Shield, uh, I think most Hydreigons tend to run something like a Life Orb and a Max Quake, and that could be something that helps um, Fami in this very, in a very unique team composition to try and go up against uh, Zacian. And Incineroar does have the fake out pressure, goes for it. Zacian doesn't protect, and I would say the Hydreigon goes next with the Worm Win into the Rillaboom slot. Actually, doesn't do a lot. And finally, Rillaboom would um, go for a damage. Uh, sorry, go for a move in return. So notably, I think Rillaboom and uh, Rillaboom took the damage really well because he had a special defense boost from the max quake earlier. Definitely be able to take it better uh, thanks to the max quake boost that you just mentioned. But uh, yeah, I found me in a peculiar slot. Was able to guarantee that the. Zacian won't be able to touch the Hydreigon this turn, uh, thanks to the fake out and uh, you know Zacian not Pokemon able to Dynamax. But now uh, the Zacian is able to uh, go for a play rough if it has access to it, and Hydreigon not showing the Life Orb damage uh, from its two attacks this past uh, two turns uh, might indicate, along with showing the Snarl move, that it might have a, a Assault Vest item. Um, 
to be a lot stronger against the uh, you know special attacking uh, Lunala or the Caloric Shadow that it's meant to do the most work against. So uh, now it's a peculiar position where if that's true, then Hydreigon won't be able to protect against the Zacian attack coming. Uh, so we'll see how Fami uh, goes through this turn. Yeah, it's kind of a weird like choice to Dynamax right off the bat, um, knowing that like you are doing not super effective damage because the Hydreigon didn't actually go for the Zacian even if the Incineroar went for the Fake Out. So here comes a Sacred Sword into the Incineroar. The Incineroar is actually able to survive from a plus one Zacian, so that's very interesting. And finally, here comes the Max Quick, which targets into the Zacian, but with the special defense boost earlier from the Max Quick from Rillaboom, uh, Zacian is actually able to take that pretty comfortably. But more important thing is the Incineroar is actually still alive. Definitely, and we see this Max Quake coming in, but thanks to the Max Wormwind uh, from the previous turn as well, Ooh. the is able to hang on, and if it's going for a Flare Blitz into the Zacian, uh, this will be a big, big turn over for Fami. Yeah, so we might think uh, in retrospect, maybe that first Max Wormwind was strategic, and it kind of seems to work out here as Incineroar goes for the Flare Blitz, like you said, and down goes the Zacian, so the fastest Pokemon on the field right now is gone. Incineroar actually goes down to the re recoil, so there could be some form of trade there. But I would say from Fami's end, I think the Incineroar's only job is to take out the Zacian and it really did so. So down to the last turn of Dynamax from the Hydreigon here as we see um, what these two players are going to switch in on the free switch for this turn. We're really on the same page with you about Incineroar's job being to take down the Zacian. Uh, if, especially with the Calyrex Ice is in the back for Fami, uh, which we still don't know yet since the Regilecki is coming back out, uh, then that's definitely the one Pokemon to take out uh, since the rest don't have as much of a, uh, you know, ability to knock it out in one hit. So, uh, especially with a Hydreigon, uh, you know, not being able to resist a Behemoth Blade attack, even if there's no play rough available, uh, also doesn't appreciate those options. So uh, a big knockout here for Fami, I think, is definitely a trade that he was willing, willing to take and now uh, definitely in the driver's seat, facing down two Pokemon that are not known to be able to damage Hydreigon that much, and having one turn of Dynamax left. Thinking back, I think like the Worm Wind into the Rillaboom might be to kind of call uh, Zacian Protect, but uh, Zacian didn't protect and was able to do good damage into the Incineroar, so uh, Eden might be thinking like ahead to try and get back into the game, because like knowing that the Hydreigon is kind of staggering Dynamax right now, and we have very a uh, few precious turns of grassy terrain left, so having the faster Pokemon in the field for Fami's side, he really does seem to be in a good position. Here comes the um, Reggie Lecky going for a Protect, calling something like a Fake Out plus a Grassy Glide, but I think Eden doesn't go for it. The Max Quake moves first from the Hydreigon and reveals the Shuka Berry from the Incineroar. I'm curious to see what this like Rillaboom can do, you know, towards the end game. It goes for a sword stance. Because I was saying like it was all set up with three uh special defense boosts, so it might be sitting quite comfortably in the in front of these special attackers in Reggie Lecky and Hydreigon. The big question now is what is Fami's last Pokemon, right? Definitely. And uh we we just saw how Fami was sort of in a favorable position having a Dynamax Hydreigon facing down two Pokemon that doesn't uh, really do too much damage to it, but now calling the, the sort of passive turret protect over from Fami's and uh, respecting the Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom, and uh, instead uh, double, uh, sort of going for the Swords Dance so that there's more pressure next turn with the Grassy Glide and then a Parting Shot to reduce the damage output from the Hydreigon. Calyrex coming back in, and still not in the best place since uh, the Regilecki could go for an Electro Web and a Dark type attack to take down the Calyrex, uh, especially if the Regilecki has a, um, uh, an item like the Focus Sash, definitely be able to do this despite any Grassy Glide pressure. So uh, yeah, excited to see uh, what happens this turn. Yeah, you're right. I think it feels like um, Eden still has to play very carefully. I kind of understand that I think shot coming from coming out from the Incineroar to keep the Incineroar safe because if you look at the Pokemon in the back, like presumably Fami would bring one of his restricted Pokemon in the Calyrex Ice or the Lunala and uh, the Incineroar should be a very good answer to that. And Eden is really playing so carefully to make sure that Calyrex Shadow 
his their Calyrex shadow stays as safe as possible, possibly hinting that it has an item like the Focus Sash. And over here, let's see um, what the Incineroar... Yeah, Incineroar on its last turn of um, the Grassy Terrain goes for the Grassy Terrain, but actually doesn't do that much damage to the Reggie Lucky, which is quite surpri surprising. Reggie Lucky goes for the Vote Switch and reveals that Life Orb item. So we kind of can guess... Uh, kind of can deduce where the Focus Sash could be on that team and switches out to reveal the final Pokemon which is the Calyrex Eyes from Fami's side. Yeah, a lot of Fami's early plays really paying dividends for him. Uh, as we see the, the two Max Wormwinds, the Intimidates early on, uh, really mitigating Rillaboom's damage output uh, despite the Swords Dance. And yeah, the Snarl here not super effective, but uh, you know this Rillaboom really not appreciating these two Pokemon uh, over on Flamiz, and uh, even if you know he's able to get up another Swords Dance, for example, uh, you know probably not going to be able to do that much damage to, especially the Hydreigon uh, now with the uh, Grassy Terrain gone. So uh, even definitely not in a great spot still. Uh, needs to be able to uh, you know get a little bit more damage on the Hydreigon. Uh, especially since the Calyrex in the back is a uh, Pokemon known to suffer against uh, Dark types. Yeah, I like the way you um, talked about the matchup right at the beginning of the match, saying that the Hydreigon does make an impact, and Fami is really understanding it in this game, keeping the Hydreigon on the field at all times. Right, you just do you like both Incineroar and um, Rillaboom can't threaten meaningful damage into the Hydreigon, so you can just sit there and just keep dishing out damage, being the faster Pokemon. So here we see the Fake Out come out from the Incineroar to at least stop the Calyrex on its tracks. The Rillaboom moves next and goes for the Sword Stuns, and the Calyrex flinches, so there could be some hint on the speed tiers here. And I think um, that's a good strategy, going straight for the Sword Stuns, knowing that the Incineroar is not around, so that hopefully um, Eden have to try their best to target down into the Calyrex because the Calyrex is really the Pokemon that's threatening the KO onto the Rillaboom. Certainly, and uh, right now it's just really not looking great for inside. Uh, really uh, interested to see her, see how they may be able to do more damage onto the Hydreigon. Maybe the, uh, the Calyrex Shadow has access to Draining Kiss if it's like a Choice Specs uh, variant. But the, the typical ones usually have Psychic and Ghost-type attacks, so uh, even with the Swords Dance, uh, yeah, quite curious to see if this will be enough. Um, at True. least switch in the Calyrex Shadow, which might be taking a Glacial Lance here. Yeah, I can kind of see this line of play because the Incineroar from Eden's End is uh, at range from this Earth Power that's coming into the Calyrex. Uh, Calyrex Shadow now, so Calyrex takes it comfortably. Let's see if Calyrex is naturally bulky enough to take this uh, Glacial Lance, which is uh, which is spread damage. And I think that's a pretty uh, strategic protect from the real room. The Calyrex survives, so in this turn, Calyrex should be able to move first. Uh, and I think really the goal here is to take out the Calyrex eyes on the opposing side and like try to deal with the Hydreigon in the end game. But I do agree with you, Yuki, that. This seems quite tricky for Eden to squeeze out a win here. Uh, yeah, but I think Eden is definitely uh, giving Fami a run for his money, uh, bringing in the Calyrex Shadow, knowing his damage calculations to see that, okay, Hydreigon I'm probably going to go for another Earth Power, seeing that, you know, that would probably knock out the Incineroar based on the previous turn's damage, and then a Glacial Lance. Both those moves, I think my Calyrex Shadow will be able to take it. So uh, I'm going to bring in the one Pokemon that can move first before both the Calyrex Ice and the Hydreigon around Fami's end and see what can be done. And as he goes for the Protect, baiting the Hydreigon to uh, potentially target into it, uh, we'll see if it's taken. Yeah, I like this Protect coming out from Eden because you are calling the opposing Calyrex Ice to Protect. The Calyrex Ice wouldn't exactly want to go for Trick Room because then that would make the Hydreigon uh, Hydreigon faster, so this turn actually plays out perfectly for Eden. They have to kind of make every call correct from here on out, and now they threaten very strong Astro Barrage down onto the Calyrex side because um, the opposing Calyrex eyes just protected. And notably, this um, Rillaboom from Eden's end just went for the uh, Grassy Glide, fully, fully calling that the opposing Calyrex Ice is going to protect and actually does meaningful damage into the Hydreigon now that it actually got another Sword Stance up. With the Calyrex Ice going for Protect, not likely to go for a, protect as, a double Protect. As you can see, the Astro Barrage going in, 
if the Hydreigon's attack is not able to take down the Rillaboom, then I think it's pretty likely for the Rillaboom to be able to knock out the uh, Calyrex Ice, a Pokemon not known to be as fast as Rillaboom. And we see the weakness policy being procced and might be a little too late for this Calyrex Ice, but uh, the Hydreigon able to take down the Calyrex Shadow. Yeah, Hydreigon going for the Calyrex Shadow, I think that makes sense because you kind of have to remember that the Rillaboom went for 3 max quick, so it's kind of unreasonable to try and target the Rillaboom. So Fami is actually accepting that the Calyrex Ice is going to go down and really just does so. Uh, doesn't want to go for that chance of going for a double protect. I think there could be some game plan here because the Regilecki, like we have seen, um, has the protect and also has the life orb item. So keeping it in the back safe without grassy terrain, allowing it to help do good damage uh, might be useful. But I think the tables have turned, right? Like there could be a chance that Rillaboom can clash this out all because um, Eden from all the way from turn one, kind of prepared it to go for three uh, max quick boosts. That's kind of cool. Certainly, yeah. I mean, like you said earlier, Eden really had to make every turn correct uh, to fa to be able to take uh, this Hydreigon down, and it looks pretty close. Uh, seeing how much damage they took from the uh, Astral Barrage, probably an Assault Vest variant that she can't protect, taking advantage of that, and then going for the Fake Out, but will this Hyper Beam be able to knock out the Rillaboom, which likely is targeting down the Hydreigon, but not enough thanks to the max quick boost from earlier. And now we'll see if this grassy glide's enough. And I think that wow. was Fami's... takes it yeah, out. Th yeah, that was Fami's only way out. Like, he had to get sort of the Hyper Beam creep because he knows that Reggie Lecky is faster. You also kind of have to play mind games and really um, trust that the opponent's not gonna, like, gonna try and call the Reggie Lecky Protect and use the Incineroar to fake out the Reggie Lecky instead. But things didn't turn out. The Hyper Beam was really cool to see because it's a live offset. So unfortunately, wasn't able to take out the Rillaboom and it goes to show how interesting these kind of game plans can get because the Rillaboom just went for three max quicks despite having a uh, max, like being max worm winded, right? And also being intimidated. It was still able to stick uh, on the field and go toe to toe actually with that Hydreigon all the way to the end. What a cool match. Yeah, a phenomenal match. I think both sides really thinking long term, you know, I think we might have mentioned a bit in the mid game part, the Max Wormans, oh yeah, like, you know, now the, uh, you know, the Incineroar is able to survive, go for the critical uh, Flare Blitz into the Zacian, uh, which threatens both the Hydreigon and the Calyrex. But in return, all those Max Quake boosts that seemed a little bit trivial in the beginning, really coming to uh, sort of haunt me in the end, uh, being able to survive the Hyper Beam uh, to get that last critical Grassy Glide onto the Hydreigon. If that Grassy Glide didn't KO, then the Hydreigon, the Aleki, Reggie Aleki, both Pokemon known to be faster than Rillaboom and Incineroar, were able to get the two knockouts the following turn. So uh, really, really excellent playing from both players. And yeah, uh, great uh, first win for uh, inside uh, curious to see how both players adapt for the second one. Yeah, so cool to see um, this Rillaboom and Incineroar. Like, they are the staple Pokemon of VGC, and they are the ones that just carry Eden's team all the way to the end, all the way to the end game, with um, Incineroar being able to fake out. And we kind of, like, uh, deduced that the Hydreigon was, uh, what's that called, the Assault Vest set, so it does make sense to fake out into it and go for that Grassy Glide, and it's impressive to see actually that Grassy Glide take that KO. So let's jump into game two, and yeah, that was a thunderous Therian, apologies to Eden on my mistake earlier. And we see a change up on lead on both sides, so um, Zashen straight right off the bat instead of the Calyrex Shadow, together with a thunderous, so two, the, yeah, like, wow, what a crazy lead, and the double duck type um, also right off the bat coming out from Fami, so interesting. Yeah, we see adjustments from both players and so uh, Fami uh, respecting that the Hydreigon is most uh, threatened by the uh, Zacian and the Incineroar able to, uh, you know, mitigate its damage with the Intimidate ability and also uh, threatened with the Flare Blitz. Really good adjustment from uh, his end. But over on Eden's end, uh, they brought the Thunderous this time. Uh, a Pokemon with a really high special attack stat and able to also go for uh, a max airstream. So uh, as we saw the um, Hydreigon set, probably not uh, able to have any kind of speed control. So uh, Thunderous being able to uh, single-handedly give Eden the edge 
over on the speed side. So, uh, yeah, really curious to see if both players go for the Dynamax, and we definitely see it on Eden then. Yeah, I think like Eden um, correctly not leads with the Calyrex Shadow, and over here leads with the very unconventional Pokemon of uh, Thunderous Therion, and we do see again another turn one Max coming out from Eden. Um, I'm curious to see if the Hydreigon maxes, but it doesn't, and it, you know it showed Snarl earlier, and you know most of us should assume that uh, Thunderous Therion is a special attacker, so that could make sense. Here comes a Max Strike, probably coming out from Hyper Beam, going into the Hydreigon. If it's a Salt Vest, that damage is actually quite impressive. Uh, notably earlier, the Zashan protected from the Incineroar Fake Out, so this time playing things differently and actually catching the Earth Power from the Hydreigon. So what a good protect from the Zashan. Excellent player from Eden's End, uh, respecting that the Fake Out might come out from the Incineroar, not likely to come into the Thunderous. And uh, yeah, really a testament to how strong Thunderous' uh, special attack is, uh, going for that max strike uh, through uh, a Pokemon holding that Assault Vest Eisen, and presumably doing almost half to it. It uh, doesn't even have the same attack, attack bonus, so now, uh, yeah, it looks like Fami a little bit in the back seat. Uh, Hydreigon going for the Dynamax here probably doesn't make too much sense given uh, Zacian's signature move uh, doesn't uh, gets its attack doubled when it attacks a Dynamax Pokemon. So uh, we might see an Incineroar uh, Dynamax potentially, or potentially uh, you know stalling out even more uh, Dynamax turns uh, from Eden's end. So instead, no Dynamax coming out from Fami, playing these first few turns very carefully, um, letting the Hydreigon just go down um, to that Beam of Blade, it could be a good plan towards the end game. And Thunderous here goes for this Max Airstream, which is, if I am not wrong, physical. It actually goes into the Incineroar that actually intimidate both uh, these two Pokemon from Eden earlier. So that wasn't very significant damage. And Incineroar, knowing that the Zacian is already intimidated, it can also come in again and intimidate again. So goes for the parting shot into what I would say the correct slot into the Thunderous Therion and reducing its damage for future turns. And now Thunderous Therion only has one last Dynamax. Whereas for Fami's side, he still has three Pokemon. And let's see what he stands out and how he proceeds towards the mid game uh, in this situation. Yeah, like you said, you didn't having the advantage in the early game, but in the mid game, curious to see how Fami uh, sort of adjusts here. We see Lunala come in. Uh, you know, at first glance, Eden doesn't have that much of a, uh, you know, offensive uh, pressure against Lunala. Uh, no dark types or uh, ghost types in sight, but uh, Thunder is a Pokemon that is known to have the Dark Pulse attack. So if they have access to it, then, uh, you know, the Lunala will be threatened. Uh, thanks to his Shadow Shield ability, though, if uh, Incineroar wants to go for a fake out into the Zacian and something <laughs> like a Moongeist, be a, a Meteor Beam into the Thunderous might be able to take it out, but also, Thunderous might be the one on Eden's team to have the Assault Vest items. So, uh, yeah, really curious to see what happens here. They also have the option to go for a Trick Room. Uh, not all Lunala necessarily have that attack uh, move, but uh, seeing Fami have the Calyrex Ice, a Pokemon mm -hmm. not known to have a high speed stat, uh, might be this might be their one chance to go for the Trick Room thanks to the Fake Out Pressure. Oh my god, no Trick Room. I was about to... Uh, comment that like both sides uh, like switch it up for game two and bring such interesting Pokemon and what what so the the Thunderous is one of them the Lunala is actually one of them and the Incineroar is here on the field Dynamaxing now wow really clever play on uh, Fami's end uh, usually the Lunala might be the more obvious candidate for the Dynamax but going for the Incineroar uh, uh, thanks to the boost in the uh, it's Flare Blitz attack becoming uh, a max move. Yeah, we might be able to see it take out the Zacian, but as we just talked about, it looks like Thunders has that Dark type attack for going for the max darkness. And yeah, this puts Fami behind by uh, two Pokemon counts. Yeah, I got a feeling Fami was really just trying to read uh, Zacian Protect or some kind of defensive play, expecting this fake out Trick Room uh, like plan, right? Like Incineroar faking out. Lunala going for a Trick Room and then like maybe Dynamaxing the Incineroar to get a lot of a lot more momentum but Eden just plays straight forward. They just go for it, they just go for the Beam of Blade and the da Max Darkness uh, follow-up and that could be something that 
we recognize as casters, but maybe from Fami's end, he didn't expect this Max Darkness to come in and um, was confident that the Lunala could set up Trick Room. So unfortunately, Lunala just goes mm. down straight away. And um, Incineroar still has two more turns left, but Incineroar has to fight against four Pokemon from Eden's end. And I'm not sure if this um, Life or Reggie Lecky can help too. Yeah, I have a great point. Yeah, I might have just not have uh, respected the potential Dark Pulse on the Thunderous, so didn't feel like, uh, you know, the obvious fake out Trick Room play was worth it. But uh, especially with the Regilek in the back, might not be something mm -hmm. that they wanted to do. But uh, thanks to the Max Airstream earlier, Zacian most likely faster than the Regilek. So, uh, you know, before it gets hit by Electro Web or some move like that, uh, will likely be able to get an attack off. So we see the Reggie Lecky going for a Protect to respect this. And yeah, we see the Zacian going for the Reggie Lecky, so great adjustment there. And here comes the Hyper Beam. Wow, this is a double up into the Reggie Lecky slot. Kind of expecting the Reggie Lecky to take out either one of the Zacian or the Thunderous. And probably that, that kind of makes sense. But I think uh, Fami uh, playing correctly in protecting the Reggie Lecky because he remembers that the both Sashin and Thunderous have a speed boost. Right, and uh, so this turn, uh, Reggie Lecky going for the Protect already means it's definitely vulnerable to a mm -hmm. double up from the uh, Rillaboom and Sashin. Uh, either a Fake Out or a Grassy Glide plus a Sacred Sword should be more than enough to take down the Reggie Lecky. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, Fami, or sorry, if Eden wants to take down the Reggie Lecky, most likely the Sashin will have to attack mean the Incineroar will be able to take it out. Um, maybe even going for something like a Max Strike so that it can be faster than the Rillaboom on the following turn. Uh, so yeah, definitely not over for Fami's and yeah. uh, especially since they should be able to get one knockout this turn at least. Uh, but it'll just be whether uh, yeah this Incineroar can carry Fami entirely this uh, rest of this match. It's good to know that the Reggie Lecky is a life offset, so going for like Either Grassy Glide or Sacred Sword and hope for the KO could be a good strategy. But I think it was a like it might be on a whim, but this Dynamax Incineroar really seems to be putting out a lot of pressure. I wanted to say earlier that all this time Oh no, here comes the double protect. So I wanted to say earlier wow. that all this time the Zashan and the Thunderous were the only Pokemon on the field, so Eden still hasn't shown their last Pokemon. But in this case, it's like Incineroar really is just sitting so comfortably, being able to Dynamax and dish out a lot of damage. Let's see if the Grassy Seed actually helps here, but it does not with oh. that critical hit. It, it might have mattered, because although it was in the sun, I think Rillaboom like, tends to be quite bulky. So um, getting like this play oh, more or less like into their favor, into, into Kai, uh, Fami's favor, and like that right all of a sudden Eden is down to just two Pokemon and here's a 2v2 right in front of us. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it's always really, really uh, exciting to, when <laughs> we see a player go for a double protect when they absolutely have to, right? Like it was so obvious that Eden will probably go for a double into the Regilecki after seeing they just went for the protect. But Fami not letting him punish that, going for that 33% chance with the double protect and paying off dividends for him especially with the Max Flare, uh, getting the critical hit on Eden's side, uh, may or may not have mattered thanks to the sun being up, um, despite the defense boosts from the Grassy mm -hmm. Seed. Uh, yeah, unclear whether it would have uh, mattered or not, but now we see the Z uh, Eden's end uh, going for the bait with the Protect, and maybe this Incineroar went for the Flare Blitz uh, onto the Regieleki. Yeah, I wanted to say real quick that this might be uh, Incineroar versus Incineroar Endgame, but what an interesting protect coming out from Eden. Because the Zashan, like it kind of makes sense because the Zashan is the faster one, faster than the Reggie Lecky, but this protect helps so much because um, yes. Eden seems to be comfortable that their Incineroar is able in the sun to take out the Reggie Lecky, and that was true. So now, Fami is left with just one poor Incineroar facing down against the Zashan. If I do remember earlier, let's see if uh, Eden's gonna check for us. This Zashan probably has an uh, Intimidate drop. So hopefully, uh, like, Fami's Incineroar can survive a move from both and then uh, take down the Zashan and then force the Incineroar 1v1 that we have seen quite often in earlier formats. Whoa, what a, that's a berry. Right, wow. Thanks to the berry and be able to mitigate it's the damage over. from... Yeah, definitely not over. We can't count uh, Fami out too quickly. 
as we see the flare blitz go in from inside, but uh, Fami likely to retaliate with his own flare blitz into the Zacian, getting that knockout. And uh, just as you had predicted, uh, we actually do see a uh, Insurna versus Insurna mirror match at the very end. But uh, even with the berry, I think uh, Eden's Insurna has the speed advantage, has the HP advantage. So uh, we might need to see uh, a little bit of some critical hits happening uh, in order for Fami to turn this one around. True, yeah, that's quite interesting. And what a fun match, like, for the first match for me and you to cast together to end up yes. with actually an Incineroar versus Incineroar endgame. Uh, I, I really like that Citrus Berry. It really came out of nowhere and uh, it does make the match look a little bit closer. Uh, notably, from the grassy terrain recovery and from the Incineroar's interacting, Eden's Incineroar has always been moving first. Going for Throat Trout makes so much sense. We remember this, uh, like, from series... 3 series 5 and not going for the flare blitz to um, reduce your HP through recoil. I think maybe going for something like parting shot could be useful tool from Eden's and knowing that you are always the Pokemon with the HP advantage. Right, I think throw chop usually a move to uh, you know, prevent the party shot ah, from the snarls from uh, opposing true. the snore, but in this case most likely used to uh, mitigate the recoil damage, like you said. Uh, not going to let any critical hits from Fami's and uh, ruin Eden's, uh, you know, the advantage they had racked up. So uh, I think that's the play there. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's always quite interesting to see, um, you know, how Incineroar will kind of evolve in this format. Uh, obviously, if you have the faster Incineroar, like in this case, where you have the faster throat chop, then you can always sort of call whether the opponent will be able to, uh, you know, parting shot out or not. Um, you are always in the advantage there. So uh, really curious to see as we lead up into the World Championships, uh, what kind of adjustments players will make into their Sonora, whether they'll try to prioritize the faster throat chop or the bigger bulk to, uh, you know, better survive some Sacred Swords. Yeah, those are some really cool ideas coming out. And um, we see the final blow coming out from Eden's Incineroar being the faster one, going for the Flare Blitz knowing their damage counts and taking the set with a like more or less confident 2-0 for UK. So UK is actually, wait for it, they're up 3-1 and one now against wow. Malaysia because we have news that just came in that Matt Maynard uh, also managed to win their set as we were commentating this one, 2-0 mm. uh, against Arcliffe. So UK all of a sudden has a very strong chance, right? Because all they have to do is win this set to clinch the top two spot within their group. Yeah, let's talk a little bit back on that on that match, right? I really like that turn uh, the game to adjustments where both sides just bring mm. like mons that they, they wouldn't expect and the Thunderers actually managed to put in some good effect uh, and even help take down the Lunala, right? Yeah, uh, the adjustment is just the, the joy of watching best of three is the adjustments both players make. Uh, we saw a small adjustment over uh, from Fami's and bringing that Incineroar in to pressure that Zacian a little bit more, but uh, that adjustment from Thunderous was just way more substantial uh, over from Eden's and uh, able to get the max airstream boost, which was, uh, you know, pretty important in the end game to be able to be faster than the Regieleki and then also just be uh, way harder to take down uh, thanks to its typing. So... Uh, yeah, really phenomenal game, and uh, you know we always end with those kind of Incineroar mirror matches, mm -hmm. and we're a little bit closer thanks to the Barry, but uh, you know we see in uh, sort of eke it out at the end. So uh, really, really phenomenal best of three there. Yeah, and I would say like from team building perspective, that Thunderous being Therian actually like made a little bit of difference, and I'm so uh, like we are so excited to watch it play out. Uh, and cast mm -hmm. it along the way and also feature it for you guys back at home. Um, like that, we, we kind of cheated a little bit. We saw that the item was a sort vest and that really like just helped the Thunderous in the matchup so much more and it really justified Eden to bring it. So really props to them for that. So with that, uh, yeah, we are giving you a live update right now. It's so exciting that the uh, that UK is actually up 3-1. and one. So let's just we'll follow, follow all the... Uh, um, Socials to to try and uh, like like follow these these this particular group of dev to see how things play out. And uh, after this break, 
Um, don't go away because we're going to feature the next match, which is Ma Chun Yong from Hong Kong versus Chris Jenkins from Jamaica. We'll see you soon.